Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to a new and improved, brand new episode. <laughs> new and improved, yeah, right. Of uh, Final episode Nation. of the year. Yay, that's right. Yep, this is it. Next time we see you, we'll see you next year. <laughs> this is the end of season one. Yeah, it is. Yep, yep. So don't forget, I think in February, the DVD box set comes out. So very, very <laughs> exciting. We're looking forward to that. So uh, all yeah. the outtakes are in. Well, you get to see all the outtakes. <laughs> <if you'll edit. laughs> I was going to say, what a outtakes. So where are they at? Uh, the behind the scenes stuff. The, the pre shows. Stuff. The pre show brief two two minute discussion. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it was really in depth. I mean, you really wanted for that because we we talk about such great things before. Yeah, the show. things that nobody would want to know about but us. Right. <laughs> it's not about no. the show, hardly. Yeah, right over the, right over the head, you know. So. Well, uh, yeah, this is our final show of the year, uh, and we thought, you know, what we haven't really spoke too much about one of our our favorite performers, so we thought what we would do an Ozzy Osbourne album to, to end the season. Because you know? everybody else does the their end of year episodes of any particular yeah. show. It's all about celebrities who died and, and your New Year's resolutions. I'll give you my New Year's resolution right now. I never fucking have one. I don't care. <laughs> it's New Year's Eve, all you dumbass idiots to go out on New Year's Eve. It's yep. just another day. Well, yeah, that's why you know you and I coined the phrase many thousands of years ago. It's, we call uh, New Year's Eve amateur night. Yeah, correct. Yeah, exactly. you know, let, let, let the pros stay home. Yeah, yeah, damn straight. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, so this is it. We're going to do Ozzy's Diary of a Madman. It's uh, interesting to look back at this, too. Yeah, really. you know, I hadn't really listened to this for a while, I'll have to admit. And, and it was good to catch back up uh, on it. Uh, last out with Randy Rhodes. That's correct. Course, you know, so it came out in November of 81 and, and, and Rhodes passed away the following year. And there's um, a new Randy Rhodes documentary out there. I forget what network it is on, but I, I did really? see it. It's very, very good. Yeah. It was good. well worth good. everybody's time. Look it up. You can find it online, I'm sure. Oh, there you go. There you go. Should we get into yeah. the controversy about, I mean, I, I don't even want to name names, but who played what on, on this album and the fact that it right. was re recorded at one point, or parts of it right. were anyway. Right. Yeah, yeah. Basically, there's two versions of the album. Yeah, is what it boils down to. Uh, and we never released names, so the two that got canned were Bob Daisley, <laughs> the bass player. <laughs> really good play. Yeah, um, and, and uh, Lee Kerslake, uh, the the drummer. Uh, I'm sure Rusty probably knows him, but uh, yeah, you know, we, we have some <laughs> friends who are really, and I get it. You know, if you played on, on a certain project where you deserve right. writing credits, right. you should be outraged about stuff like that. Well, um, considering, quick, oh, I'm sorry, just real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry for, for these purposes, I, I just looked at what I thought the album sounds like in general. Well, you know, and, and you said I just wanted to uh, butt in for a second was the fact sure. too that you know one of them that got gets fired, you know, the bass player Bob Daisley, he wrote Diary of a Madman. Yeah. And yeah, uh, and flying high problem. again, and there's yeah. also problems with the first the, with the debut album, which we almost mm -hmm. reviewed, by the way. But yeah. it, it's been done to death. So it's yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. We kind of bounced around this idea. This is our behind the scenes stuff. You want to call it that? Uh, uh, which album to do? And it was like, you know, we didn't want to do the new stuff because everybody kind of piles on that, and 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 we talk about way too much. But this one kind of I don't know. This seems like it seems like it flies under the radar sometimes. I think I, it's I a, to do it. It's it's not a well, it's not a completely forgotten album mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because people know it, but I mean right. the material it doesn't get played live a lot. Right. I I wonder and I don't know this, it's just, just supposition on my part mm -hmm. with Sharon Osborne and all this stuff. I just wonder if you know one is there any publishing issues too? Mm. It's the last album that Randy played on. Ozzy mm. probably doesn't feel too good about, you know, mm -hmm. some of that stuff. Right, right. And, and um, But, you know, one of the songs I already know that he won't play live. Um, yeah. We'll get to that as we roll through it. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, uh, you know, Sharon and Ozzy ended up getting sued, of course, uh, by the by the two guys. And, and they won. Yeah. Uh, the guys did. They won. I was like, wow. So, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that as, as we go along here and all. Um, Maybe I think the truth words about Sharon, too. Oh, yeah, because we love her so much. Oh, yeah, of course we do. Yeah, this generation's Yoko Ono. Uh, anyway, so uh, not that she killed the band, but yeah, it didn't help matters much. Uh, also, the thing what I, I think we should discuss real quick and all, because, you know, is, is this one is the one that throws people off as there is. is I love how people have called the name of the song. I've heard it called Sato, Sato, S A T O. And I'm like, yeah, that, what it stands for is Sharon Arden, which is Sharon Osbourne's uh, maiden name, and Thelma Osbourne, who was Ozzy's first 
That is correct. That, that's that's what that the too. SATO. So yeah, so we, you know, I just wanted to you know grab that real quick and, and then and then uh, you know because that always for some reason people are like, what the hell is a SATO or a SATO or and it's like, well, it's a couple. Well, of I always people. confuse me too because there are two professional wrestlers. One was Mister Sato and one was Mister Saito. <laughs> I'm like, ah. why are they writing, you know, a song about Japanese wrestlers? Yeah, we didn't know Ozzy and Sharon were big wrestling fans. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> you know, so anyway, so let, let's go into this. And, and uh, you know, studying it and doing it, it really did remind me a lot of when we did the Master of Puppets Metallica album of, of what a difference two sides of an album can be between side A and side B. Yeah. Uh, you know. And I actually grabbed, so I put my glasses on, I actually graded the songs. I don't like doing that normally, but I have actual letter grades for everyone. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. I, I like that. It's a great idea. Um, and, and also like the, the, the Master of Puppets album, uh, you know, it's only eight songs, but yet it's 43 minutes long. So there's some long ones in here and all, but, you know, most are winners. This is definitely not where I'm going to, uh, like I do in the normal show and go, well, this is as close to a 10 as possible. No. No, but there's some great classic stuff on here. And, you know, like we said, too, it's Randy Rose's last album. So, you know, what yeah. I'm thinking is a lot of this is underrated, is what it is. I agree. I agree. Yep, wholeheartedly. Yep. So, especially side two stuff. We'll, we'll get well, you to know that. that, that, that um, JD Constantine, you remember that uh, yeah. a critic from Rolling Stone? Yeah. He, he said Randy Rhodes was terrible and this, and, and this whole album was mm -hmm. awful. And, and I mean, you yeah. look this one up, too. I always hated that guy anyway. What a piece right. of shit. We do better. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. All right, there you come, go. On. come on, Ed. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yes. Yeah, so let's let's get into it. So side to, side A, we'll start with, of course, first. And the uh, first song, you know, again, wow, what a way to start an album. Over the mountain. Over wow. The mountain. Big, uh, you know, big time, good song. I mm. did. I thought when, when when I started spinning this, I mm -hmm. thought that um, I was going to yeah, over the mountain. I, I gave a B plus, which is high, very very high. Just in retrospect, and Ozzy said this, I was reading, there were certain songs on the album where they're, they're good. You know they're good. They're really good. But right. more could have been done. And um, it was, you know, the chorus, it, it, there, there could have been more there, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a really freaking good song and a good way to start it off. Yeah, yeah. It, it's amazing. I think that's every album we've done so far, every one of them, maybe that's our part of our, what we like. We love getting hit with those first songs that just grab you by the who yeah, and, you know. Yeah, so uh, I, I love this song. Uh, it, it's an A for me if I had to give it a grade. I just, I just love it, especially again on, on headphones. Again, I'm just saying, you know, if you listen on headphones, oh, yeah. it's really, you know, booms, and, and that's just a great way to start a, a, a record, you know, uh, right with that. So, all right, my good man, what do you have for our uh, next song on side one? Well, uh, the, the second song would be "Flying High Again," the, the major single, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it. I listened to this on Amazon um, Ultimate Music, their uh, Ultimate HD version. And, and, um, there's also a 40th anniversary version HD, which is also really good. But okay. this one, the vocals and the headphones are bad. Sometimes they sound in, in the center of your head. Mm -hmm. And at other times, the echoes during the mm -hmm. song are going everywhere. I'm like, this is wild. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I've gotten to be almost like since we started this show, become like a headphone snob. Me too, I, because you know? I can I can <laughs> blast it where, where I live, obviously, and mm -hmm. I do a lot, and, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. some, it's, now I've, I've really, be, it's making me rediscover music like this. Yeah, yeah, and, and I hope that's, you know, for the people that watch the show, I hope it does that for them as well, because that's, yeah, I mean, that was, that was part of, of the reason of doing the show, was bringing back stuff that people haven't listened to for a long time and all. And it was like, oh yeah, that stuff was great, you know? So uh, yeah, Flying High again, uh, uh, amazing song. Uh, it's another- hey, just, by the way, if you want a great. Oh, that's okay, nice. okay, yeah, yeah. And, and I just think it's great. I'm like, man, that's a great way to start a record. Two big songs right in a row, you know, can't go wrong with that. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, the next uh, next song, uh, you know, it's it's I, 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 not a greatly well known song, but but known by Aussie fans and all. And I think it's magnificent. This is uh, uh, what I think is just a fantastic song. Uh, you can't kill rock and roll. Correct. Uh, I love everything about this. I think it really would make. We're going to agree on this too because I gave it an A plus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best song. Yeah, now. it is. It, it's to me, it is. It is. See again, as we told you, we tell you every week, we do not compare notes. We, you know, we like to no, shock no, each no. other. 
and, and and here we go. We just did it. Yeah, I just think it's a magnificent song. It's a little long, but that's okay. It's almost seven minutes long. But uh, you know, even on headphones, if we listen to it on headphones, it like swirls in your head. Yeah, kind of like Road shines on this. Yeah. I, I like the way it sounds. Everything mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, yeah, it's just so swirly in your head. It just, I, I love songs like that, and, and it, it's just brilliant. I mean, it, there's like literally nothing wrong with that song at all. Not at all. I even put the headphones on my 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 16 year old daughter. It's like, check this out. Oh, what she what she say? She was impressed. Yeah. Yeah, she didn't know really? the song, but uh-huh. you know, she's like, that yes. sounds great. There you wow. go. There you go. I like that. I like that. Well done. You're raising the, your child right. I, I but like Jesus is crap. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like some, some <laughs> oh, if she doesn't like what we like, I am shocked by it's, that. Yes, you know. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, so we just all right. So uh Ed and I both just got on our knees and blew Ozzy on that one because that song is fantastic. So. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. All right. What do we have for the uh song four? Last song already on the first side. No, wow. Number four is a complete change of direction mm-hmm. in, the, in the flow of this album. That is Believer. Yes. And um, after those three up tempos, and something I caught in this, and I gave it a B. Okay. Yeah. Whatever, mm-hmm. and, which is which is a fantastic grade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I caught a little, and this is it was recorded before this, but I heard a little Holy Diver in there. Oh, okay. This, yeah. So I kept hearing like I know this damn song, but. Something right. sounds familiar to me, and it's something right. came afterwards. And I'm no, no way, shape, or form saying that eyes are your Dio, you know, nothing like that. Nobody's copying right. off anybody. It's just, I just caught something here briefly. It wasn't right. like a little sights or, or, or anything like that. But right. I just thought right. that was neat, you know, same, yeah. same genre. Yeah, you know, I like the fact, too, that, yeah, it is completely different. I mean, you don't want every song to sound the same, you know, and all like that. And that's exactly what this song does. Unfortunately, it's not for the better. It's it's good. It's a good song. I like it, you know, a B, B minus if we graded it. Yeah, um, yes. yeah, you know, it's nothing earth shattering, but is it a horrible song? No, not at well, all. Well, you know, yeah. And, so, and I think the, the thing that does it functions to change what mm-hmm. you're expecting to hear. Right, right. So yeah. So you know, a nice twist on the first side, and, and that's it. Believe it or not, though, that's it. Four songs on one side, four songs on the next side. So yeah. that's all there is on this one. This Sometimes set. that's okay though. That's fine. Yeah, it's long, you know, back just back it up. If you're gonna do only eight songs, make sure they're good songs. No, yeah, no, no, yeah. no shit as filler, you know. So so anyway, all right. So let's go to side two. And the first song on side two, um, an odd song, Little Dolls. Little dolls. Range. Uh uh, it's I uh, C plus to me, but good. Better than I thought it was because it was one of those ones when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. I didn't necessarily always listen to because you got to put the right. needle on the record or, or skip with the cassette. Right. I, g- I gave it some attention. Like, this is all right. You right. Know, I, right. I, I, yeah. I kind of dig this. Yeah. I, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. When I was a kid and I first bought this album way back up in high school when this came out. And, uh, it like side A would get worn down on the vinyl, and side B was like almost pristine. We all did that. We <laughs> you all know, did it. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and it's kind of funny. That's why it's so much fun now. And it's one of the reasons I know everybody, and, and, and I have so many friends and, and, and family that collect vinyl, and I wish I could because I don't have the system that can handle a turntable. Right. But it, it's rediscovering stuff and going back and going through the entire album. Mm-hmm. Instead of just what the radio was spoon feeding you. Yeah, yeah, which, you know, everybody's guilty of that. I, you know, we are too. I you am. Know. Yeah, yeah, it could shove down your throat and all, but that's the beauty of the songs that we pick or the albums that we pick on here is that, is that they've been crammed down our throats, you know, in our lives and all, but we still love them. Yeah, and know. there's more there to, to investigate. In, in mm-hmm. reference Absolutely. Reference. Absolutely. Not that so, I hadn't heard the, the albums in the right. entirety. I know you did too. Right, right. So, so, uh, you yeah, know, so that's side two, song one, Little Dolls. We really didn't say much about, <laughs> about it. But, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a funny song. It's, not it's fun. That's about it. So, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Uh, song two, side B. What do we got? So we have, after Little Dolls, we have Tonight, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the ballad. Um, this is the worst song of the album to me. Okay. It's, a, it's, it's, a, yeah. it, it's a ballad shoved in there. I mm-hmm. still gave it a C. Oh, you were kind of I, I don't okay. hate it. But mm-hmm. um, it's eh, you know, yeah. this is the one to me is filler. Yeah, yeah, this that's but yeah, this is what I like to call it the crap song that every well, I couldn't give it an F or anything like that. Yeah, uh, I a D for me if I had to. Okay, fair enough. Know. Yeah, it was just nothing. 
to it. You know, there's just nothing that that great uh, uh, about it. Um, I mean, there's some orchestration going on in the back. I call yeah. it. And yeah. Stuff, but it's just meh. You know. Yeah. You know, like yeah. It's good for the radio. Right. Well, I think you know that's what happens with this album too. Like like Master of Puppets is you get so pumped on that first side, and then you flip it to the second, and it's like. Oh. But you know, the thing of it is, that's still smart, though, because pe- like we were just talking about a second ago, people mm-hmm. are buying albums for maybe one or two songs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Beat, beat them over the head right right at the beginning. And, right. and you know, if they drift away, they don't flip it over. Who cares? You sell right. the record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've already made our money, so screw them. There. Right, done. right. Exactly. You know? <laughs> oh, we have such a positive outlook on life, don't well, we? Well, CDs oh. kind of fucked that up, didn't they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, real quick, before we go into the next one, uh, that, that brings up an interesting point. Uh, I, I'd like to pick your brain for a second. What do right. you prefer, vinyl or CD? Uh, all I do these days is I, I play digital on, on the services, and I have, but I have the ultimate HD stuff. Right. And, and really, I, I, would, I would tell you, it doesn't matter that much to me, mm. but mm-hmm. I have a system where everything's hidden and it's got to be digital. I can play CDs, but if I don't, don't have to walk into the back of where my setup is, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I can just hit something on my computer and it, it goes through the speakers, I'm good. You're good with that. And you know what? People got to remember this. This is how I feel. Again, <clears throat> my brother, <clears throat> some of my best friends collect vinyl, and I'm jealous in a way because I wish I could. Right. The, artwork and they, it sounds great right <clears throat> but, the, but the thing of it is i'm i'm into convenience and we're not listening to beethoven here we're listening to hard rock and heavy right. metal right how much better can it necessarily <laughs> sound? i don't right. know so that yeah. was my answer yeah that was that was good yeah i wanted to pick your brain for a second because yeah. you know um i also thought yeah. one thing to throw in when mm. cds came out do you remember how freaking expensive they were oh my god they were awful the oh i mean god. it's ridiculous and then <laughs> and then they're Complaining about Napster and all this shit, Lars Ulrich. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I own Kiss Destroyer, probably ten different versions. Yeah. I feel like I already own the music. I shouldn't give anybody another dime if I paid for it the fucking first time. There you go. <laughs> uh, I love I'm it. Filtered. I-, I love it. That, and that's the beauty of this show. Yeah, you know. Um... <laughs> uh, screw Lars Ulrich. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's interesting to get people's viewpoints on that because you have the 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 ones that are diehard vinyl, and we you know nothing wrong with that. You know, we like our hisses and pops and all like that, and then you have the ones that like everything nice and clean and digital. Right. You know, I'm kind of in the middle. I I, I miss hisses and pops, believe it or not. I I actually miss a record skipping. You know, uh, you know, it was just so much fun back then. Well, but, vinyl, vinyl. If I need, if I'm going to say anything, I think it's a warmer sound. If you have yeah. a really nice term tape, turntable, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. Uh, uh, yeah, and I'm too old to be dealing with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, with the with a t- uh, CDs. I mean, I love them. Don't get me wrong. I love digital music, but you're right. <laughs> it's almost like a tinny sound until you get it in just right. That's fair. You know, that's why, I like, like with my um, digital subscriptions, where I can just um, play it at will on the phone or on the computer mm-hmm. and through my system. Right. I just I, I like that convenience, and I pay for the best that I can get. There you go. You know, What's going to do? It? You get Spotify, you get Amazon, whatever. I want the premium, so I there do have go. that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do it, do it right. And, and this album was off Amazon Unlimited um, Ultra HD, and I under the headphones went. I don't know how I could get any better than what I just heard. Wow, nice. Wow, nice. You know. yep, that's the way it should be. I like that. So, um, yeah, yeah. So I just you know was was kind of. Uh, thinking about that was uh the, the the battle between vinyl and, and digital but uh yeah but i think There's the big no thing you know yeah, people yeah. Like what they like. i think the main thing we got out of that was that we both hate lars ulrich okay yeah, so, now we, so. <laughs> so now uh the third song on side two is, is the one we were talking about earlier uh sato sato s-a-t-o yeah. how to pronounce it it's a good song it's a good tune it is i uh, like it it rocks it rocks a little sarcasm. And, uh, no, it does. No, it really does. I like. Mm-hmm. I like the song. It's the one oh, that no, I, I, I mentioned. This early, I alluded to it earlier in the show. Mm-hmm. It Ozzy doesn't want to play. Yeah, and he, and he yeah. said it's one of the most requested songs. He of gets, course, why doesn't he play it? Right, and right. Uh, he just felt it was unfinished sounding and that kind of thing. Right, and um, but 
I like it a lot. Yeah. I think it's a yeah. good tier. That'd be like a B. Right. Yeah. And I think that's why he avoids doing it. Is the sarcasm I was talking about is in the song, not not sarcasm. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you know, of, of balancing a song with uh, your former wife and your yeah, yeah, yeah. wife, and it's like brave, brave soul. But yeah, you know, the thing I found interesting uh, about this uh, actually almost it was almost the whole album. Uh, Ozzy didn't like it the first time he heard it. He was like, "This isn't for me. Uh, this is not going to work." But you know, they got him to you know, come on, we we'll, we'll jazz it up a little bit. You'll love it. It'll be fine, and, and that's what happened. But yeah, I find that I think I, mean, I, I would lo love to hear this song live. Quite honestly. Oh yeah, you won't. But no, yeah. you won't. No, not at but all. You, so. But you get to suffer through Mama. I'm coming home and. See <laughs> <clears throat> I can't say anything because I really like that song. So okay, it's all right. yeah, I like it. It's fun, but uh, yeah. So that's all. It's just a song about the two loves of his life at that time: one former, one one future. Oh, you mean it, it should have been about cocaine? <laughs> I already you did a song about that. <laughs> nah, he, <laughs> yeah, he, did. he didn't do drugs. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> wow, how about that weather we're having? Okay. Well, all right. So let's that get to my it. Sabbath uh, reference. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> a little sweetly. A little sweetly, actually. Oh, what the hell? Uh, so, uh, I I sweet sure snow wine. How's that? Well, let's combine them both. There you go. Yeah. You know, they do a new song, you know, sweet snow blind. <laughs> okay. So, anyway, uh, I mean, there's one more is. song. There's another song in this album. Man. Only one. It's a quick <laughs> album. It is quick. Quick one here. What you got, my friend? It is the title track, Diary of a Madman. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not too familiar with Ozzy's live sets at the time, but I do know that the intro was the intro to the tour. Yes. Yes. But, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they actually went back and played the song or not. Right. right. But uh, the intro is just classic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the song itself, it's, it's, Kind of moody. I mean, every um, interesting way to close. I got no problem with it whatsoever. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, it, it's a, but you're right. The second side's quite different. It's less mm -hmm. high energy, but I, I do think the song is a good closer in that sense that you've already been through all the the, the up tempo stuff, right? With, you know, right. And end it with on some you know darker note. Yeah, I, I I don't know if you agree, and if you don't, that you know that's fine, and I can I can handle it. But does don't you think that this song sounds more and more like a a, a Sabbath song, and not like an Ozzy like Sabbath song? Yeah, it's, it's kind of got that Sabbath. Well, don't forget, he recorded that entire around this time did mm -hmm. that entire live Sabbath album to compete with uh with, with Black Sabbath. Right. Uh, I guess it was Heaven Hell or, or Mob Rules. I'm not even sure of the year at the time. Yeah, but he was absolutely. Oh no, it was for Light Evil. Oh, that's right. You're so, right. So Ozzy Very did good. Fire out yeah. Sabbath song. So if you, you, a song like Diary of a Madman comes up, well, he's the former lead singer of Black Sabbath. Why shouldn't it sound like it? Right, right. Yeah. And that's yeah, I think, think yeah, I think that's why I like the song. It's it's dark and it's very Sabbath. Yeah, I like it a lot. And, you know, and Sabbath in a lot of ways. I mean, but but the intro ended up becoming the more famous part of it because you yeah. didn't really hear the song at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You should, I mean a lot on the tour, yeah, it was that intro. Of that, and then it usually went into flying high again. Correct. Yeah. And it was like, oh, that's yeah, that's one tour that. that you heard that too. Oh yeah, my mm -hmm. recollection. I mean, yeah. I'm that shit old, but that's yeah. how I recall. Well, I'm, yeah. hell, I'm ancient. What are you talking about? Every time I cough, dust comes out. So you know, but you know, but yeah, good, good song, great, a great way to uh to to end it. Um, it, again, it's one of those songs I really like, but I wish it would have been a little shorter. It's over six minutes long. When you do a you know, do but, a slower, you know, more dark song mm -hmm, i think mm -hmm. you have a limited shelf life on how many minutes it should actually go right mm -hmm. because people's ears and depending on your taste maybe it doesn't bother you if it's long right but right. i can see that where you know if you play too long then it gets all right let's move on where was that fast song from three songs uh, ago? right right i mean you know it's the the one good thing uh, uh about me liking uh uh Dirt, dead, you know, death metal and and those those funeral dirge songs, you know, like you know, that, like I've talked about a thousand times already. Uh, typo negative. Typo negative. They, you know, they would have ten the best lyrics in the history of music. Oh, but fantastic! <laughs> they uh, do. They really do. Yeah, you know, I I will always I will love that band forever and and all. But yeah, they would have songs that were over ten minutes long. 
but they worked, you know, and that's that's a rarity in my world. You should, I, I end up being a lot like like most people. I have like a short attention span, you know, so you've got to grab me with it. And then and, and Typo was was one of those bands that did it. But, you know, Ozzy, it, it was good. But again, and it, God, I'm going back to this album again, the Master of Puppets album. Another one where, you know, you could have like cut a couple of these songs down and put another track onto it. But, you know, even with the reissue, it's the same thing. All they added was a live version of I Don't Know. The, you know right. That, it wasn't much in the reissue that, that was no. that mattered much. And I right. think with like like the longer songs and stuff like that mm -hmm. is that um, you have to be in a mood for it. If it makes any sense. Yeah. yeah like, cause I can get yeah. that way. I can listen to a 20 something minute yes song like that. But sometimes mm -hmm. I want to hear a two minute Beatles song. Right, right. Yep, yep. And yep. the general public mostly wants the two minute style, you know, three, four minute song, whatever. Mm -hmm. They don't have much of it, like you said, not much of an attention span. Right. But, you know, you can delve deeper and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And I, you know, a song, a track or two, I think the length of, tra of the tracks on this didn't hit me as much as it, it did being excessive as it did on Master of Puppets. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was I, I re-listening to that. I was like, some of these are a little long for my taste. And this one, I was aware of the length, but I was okay with it. For That's cool. Yeah, yeah. You know, so like I said earlier, it you know, it's not it's not a ten. No, yeah, you know, and it's good. Some it's people a, it's, think it's better than Blizzard of Oz. I've heard that. I've okay. heard that too, and that's fine. You know, everybody's got their opinions. Everybody's got one, and and that that's cool. That's the beauty of music. The right. beauty, the beauty of music is is that we don't have to all agree. Uh, on oh, yeah. and, and the thing is, with Blizzard of Oz, I mean, mm -hmm. it was beaten to death on the radio. This mm. album was not really right from, from my record, my, right. my aging recollection. Mm -hmm. You got mm -hmm. flying high again. You might have heard over the mountain. I mean, I don't, I can't, I'm trying to remember, but Blizzard of Oz got a lot of play. It did. It did. Song, so that it's reflected on better. Right. But I can understand somebody listening to this one mm -hmm. and going, whoa, maybe this one's better. And maybe it is. I don't know. Right, right. Yeah, it's a tough one between this one and Blizzard of Oz. Um, both great. Let's just not yeah. even. They're both great. I mean, they're both classic, great metal albums. But yeah, that's a tough one because both have their charms, you know. The, the beauty of Ozzy is that, you know, um, not he never did two albums that all sounded the same. Right. And you know what's you know? funny? Now we're sitting here talking about it, and, and we'll exclude the live album in between. But you right. come out after this, and you, you have a completely new guitar player, just to skip ahead because we're not doing that album right now. Mm -hmm. Bark at the moon to, 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 to come back after all that shit. And that's the first song you hear. I'm like, motherfuck. He's, and there it goes. No <laughs> yep. problem. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, I and and I think this album. It, I mean, I don't know the guy, so I, I can't say. But I think this album may haunt Ozzy just a little bit because of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I think he, he kind of tries, yeah tries to avoid it, and you know, there's a couple songs he can't. You know, it's it's flying high against the one he can always can't. He, well, he can't really do. I don't think I've mm -hmm. ever seen him not play that. I could be wrong, but right, right. So and, um, I don't and, know any of these get played anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, I think. Yeah, I think over the mountain, maybe fly high again, maybe once fly high again for sure. But all right, all right, but uh, but, but yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. It's your it's it's your sophomore album as a solo artist. It's mm -hmm. a good album. It's sold it well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, why wouldn't you want to play a little bit more of it? Right. Some of that again, Randy Rhodes has a lot to do with it. I think sure. that that uh, wife of his. Uh, that's the kindest thing I'm going to say. I like that. Wonder you. about. That it, and and uh, everything that I read about this album in the beginning of Ozzy's uh, solo career, Blizzard mm -hmm. of Oz, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. nobody seemed to like her. <laughs> <laughs> but she's so well loved. I I don't know. I'm it's, surprised by this. Oh yeah. Well, apparently she yeah. didn't take over fully until this record, and mm -hmm. it just caused chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and that's what it was. And I guess we, well, while we have a minute or two. I guess the other thing is yeah. thinking about having to go on tour for for Diary of a Madman mm -hmm. after the dumbass plane crash that, that right. took a, a legendary guitar player away. Right. And right. um, you know, Brad Gillis came filling fantastically. Sounded really good. But mm -hmm. I just can't imagine having to get up there. And, and you damn well know he probably didn't even want to do this tour with his wife. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I would think. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Wife of the record company. But I. Uh, 
he's one of your best friends in the world. And you were oh, it's just a step right back out there with the same stage, with everything, and you know, in the same set. I, I can't imagine that. Yeah, I don't know if that philosophy that the show must go on, or I, I, I don't know, but you know, uh, you know, they say time heals all wounds and all and, and all, but you know, even if you look at the uh, the A and E biography of Ozzy from a couple, just a couple of years ago, you bring up Randy Rhodes' name and he still gets upset. It's yeah. Like, yeah well, it, was so, it was so freaking senseless. I mean, that's the yeah. thing. And, and and again, look up for the Randy Rhodes biography. It's on one of these pay channels yeah. and, and wow, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and just the dumbass way that he went out when he could have been, and, and and also the fact that Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen were more rivals, and I didn't actually realize that. But right. they were. yeah, yeah, it would have been interesting had he lived to see if Eddie would have been as popular as he was, or do, would we have possibly had two guitar legends? You know, to say, I, I, I'll say this because mm -hmm. I, 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 and this is no slight to either guitar player because they're mm -hmm. both favorites of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, still would have been Eddie Van Halen just for the simple fact that Sharon Osbourne would have done something to screw over Randy Rhodes. It's like, that's the way I look at yeah. it. And Randy Rhodes still would have had a great career, but Eddie Van Halen, right. that's a family band. Forget it. Right, right. So, all right, uh, join us next year when we interview Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> Oh, could you imagine that? that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, I'd love to do it. Somehow, What's I don't think that would happen. Day? She, she, she had some sort of day fire from some stupid day. Oh, the talk yeah, or something like that. that. Yeah, supposedly she quit. Oh, okay. Supposedly so. But um, you know, hey, you know, she, she's a smart lady. Let's yeah. not. Let's, you know, she is. Oh, give her, give her what one day she divorces. I hope she divorces Ozzy for Bruce Dickinson. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Uh, no, you know, I won't take, you know, you, you give credit. We all know how they feel about each other. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you give credit where it's, where it's due. She's brilliant. Uh, you know, business wise, very business savvy. You know, the you know? big problem I have with Sharon Osbourne is these days, Ozzy Osbourne is an old man. And right. he, his last album is pretty good. Actually, I'll get that. He would like to tour, but she will prop his ass up there and have him stuffed. <laughs> and have him up there doing it. You know, at least Wendy Dio has had uh, uh, Ronnie as a hologram. She would stop right. him and, and right. put stuff in her to make him move around and, you know, do this stuff and all that. Yeah. It, no, they'll have like like ropes attached to it and there'll be somebody up top yeah. moving like a care. marionette. Yeah. <laughs> so. They'd be injecting him with, with stuff to prevent rigor mortis so he could move. <laughs> that's, that's what I think of Sharon Osbourne. Oh, my. It's feel the love. Now, wow. Feel the love, everyone. My goodness. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, that's Diary of a Madman. That's <laughs> Diary Ozzy. of a Madman. That's a, a great album from uh, 1981. And uh, and uh, and that's it for, for 2022. Yeah, that next is. time you see us, it'll be 2023. And, I almost uh, thought for a split second this would be, you know, this is the, the New Year's episode. It's not. We, we have to wait until after the first to, to make the first episode yeah. of season two. Yeah, yeah. So which will be next next week. So you know, yeah. it, it's fine. It's coming. I can't believe the year is over with. It ends this weekend. It's like really, but uh, but yeah, we got a lot more goodies for you. That's for sure. And uh, there's plenty of stuff out there to review. And we'll throw the the, the, uh, the curveball every once in a while and change it up. We might you know go back and do another top ten thing like we used to do and and, and all and. You know, but uh, the main thing is, is, is it, the, the show's not going to change. And uh, hopefully for you watching it, you guys dig it. And, and you know, hopefully more people will start watching it. But that the, the way the show is now is the way we like it. And we're not going to change. Yeah, it's it. fun to do. Yeah. That's yeah. Really yeah. We, we look forward to it. And, and, and we look forward to messing up and. And, and dropping Say something inappropriate here. Yes. You know, like. It's like nothing too bad. Uh, Sharon Osbourne. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you know, but I think I, but, stung, yeah, I yeah. think I stunned the gargoyle. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy to do, young man. Not easy to do. I still got uh, it. Yeah. But uh, in, in all honesty, you know, thanks everybody for that have been watching. You know, do Absolutely. appreciate that. Yeah, uh, and I'll say this: coming out of my uh, bad guy mode, heel mode, whatever you want to call it. Merry Christmas, to everyone. Have a wonderful New Year. Yep. I'll be home listening to music. There you go. That's what I'll I'll be doing. So and and probably drinking some eggnog and you know and and I'll be fine. Uh, you know. So so yeah. So you know. Thanks for joining us, and we hope you enjoy. Yeah, yeah I like this idea. Season one. So season yeah. two will start next next uh, next week, and all. But yeah, we wish you all a, a very happy new year. 
Don't go drinking and driving. Don't be stupid, you morons. Do that. Don't do that. There is something right? called Uber. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, just be careful out there. And, uh, and, you know, thanks again for watching us. Uh, we will see you next year for season next two. Year. Wow. Look out, it's everybody. It's really only a week from now, but that's it. Okay. Hey, you're ruining the mystique. I get it. And we have no <laughs> idea what the show is going to be yet. We have absolutely no clue. And that's why, that's how we like it. We we, yeah. we never plan on the day that we do the show. It's not for like a couple more days. I'll either, uh, message Ed or Ed will message me. What do you want to do this week? And I'll be like, uh, whatever. Sure. You know, so, so, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, that's what part is of the fun. You should just show up here and just do one we have without a plan and just do it. Oh, absolutely. We should put a, a that, could, that could get dangerous, though. Think about it. That could get really dangerous. Yeah, we like living on the edge. So, yeah. So, but anyway, uh, again, thanks everybody for watching. We really appreciate it. We will see you next year, uh, which is next week, and uh, we'll have another album to review. So, take care. Drink. Have fun drinking, just don't drink and drive. That's all we say. Have a happy new year. Happy new year, everybody. Rock on. Keep it going. We love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. We're out of here. Bye now.